Why does Guinness have a two-part pour, and is it even necessary? Let's find out. Hello and welcome back to the channel and yes today we're going to be talking all about Guinness and its two-part pouring method. Now you can't have ever ordered a pint of Guinness or even seen someone order a pint of Guinness and not think that's a bit different. Obviously everyone knows it by now Guinness has a two-part pouring method where about two-thirds of the beer is poured gets left to rest for an amount of time there is an official guidance now I believe I'll put it on the screen now because I can't remember what it is but it gets left for that long and then gets topped up and of course if the pint is poured properly the lever when serving gets pulled towards and then for the second pot actually gets pushed back so it is a slightly different dispensing method and I think there is a bit of historic reasoning behind it. Whilst I was trawling the internet the other day, I came across a BBC Archives piece of footage that actually detailed something called Plain or Porter in Ireland. Now, we all know what Porter is, but what was interesting about this footage is that it demonstrated a two-part pour as kind of a part of Ireland's drinking history and legacy, but it was all around Porter and not Stout, but we know words tend to get a bit twisted and distorted, especially in the beer world from kind of era to era. And well, we can only imagine actually thinking about it, Guinness is not the heaviest, depthiest stout going. So maybe its origins were definitely in Porter after all. So what would happen, and of course this is back in the days pre uh, kind of keg lines and pre nitrogen flush stuff and all of that, it was old school casks. What they would do is pull the first two thirds of the beer, as we do with Guinness today, from a more lively cask. It had more carbonation in it, more natural fermentation in the cask itself, and that would produce kind of the liveliness, the kind of velocity of the beer itself. They would then let that settle and from the image you're probably seeing now, it really needed to settle for some time. And then they would top it up from a second cast that was effectively flat, but had much better mouthfeel, blending the two together. And that resulted in, well, what they called then cream. And that is exactly what Guinness call it as well. What's really interesting though, is that this video is from back in the seventies. And the uh, presenter was basically saying that it was the death of this style of beer and yeah, you're not going to be able to get it anymore. Well, yeah, Guinness kind of proved everyone wrong on that front. So the question really is, does Guinness need the two-pot pour today or not? Because it's clearly got this historic connection. There's a little bit of fanfare around it. Like, it's a distinctly different thing to anything else on the bar. And you can understand it from, you know, those old days with the different kind of carbonation levels in the cast. You could achieve something that otherwise you wouldn't have been able to out of a single cask. But with the way it's done today, is that really necessary, especially given how Guinness is nitrogen charged and all the rest of it? Yeah, is it properly required? And of course, we're going to find out using Guinness's latest nifty gizmo. The Nitro Surge came out in the UK last year. It's been in around in Ireland, I think, for about a year before that. And effectively, this enables you to do that two part pour properly at home. And the way it works is these beers are nitrogen charged, as is the regular draft can, but there's no widget in these. It doesn't activate on the way out of the can. That's what the top is for. You hook it up, you turn it on for the first pour, which effectively energizes the nitrogen. And then for the second pour, it's turned off. And well, that, that bit doesn't have the nitrogen as I guess aggressively released. And as a result, you end up with a pretty decent pint. But yeah, today we're going to find out if I just leave this on and pour the whole thing, does it really make any difference or not? So first up, I'm going to do a regular two part pour. It's been a little while since I've used one of these. But basically the idea is to get it all lined up, get it on there and get it on as quickly as possible. And now we wait. A few minutes later. Okay, not a bad looking first pour at all. And now we top it up without the gizmo turned on. And they say, have faith, it will stop before it spills. But I never quite trust it. But it did. And now as quick as I can, I'm gonna do the pour with no two-parter. Mm. 
Now I do worry it might overflow. But this, oh no. And once again, we have to wait. One eternity later. Okay then, the one part pour we did actually took a lot longer to settle, probably because more of it was energized. In the glasses here and now, this one is the two pot pour and this is the one, and I think you'd say they look pretty, pretty even, but I think that's the angle of the camera coming down onto them. From the side here, there is distinctly more foam, more head on the one pot pour. If I bring them up to the camera, you can probably see a little bit better. Let's try the, the old tilt. I mean, they both, they both tilt very well. I don't want to get beer everywhere, but they look good. But to me, the one part pour actually headwise feels maybe like it's more consistent with what you get in a bar, maybe halfway between the two in reality. But yeah, they both look pretty decent. So let's give them a try. Cheers to the two part pour. Guinness and moustaches just don't mix, but that is a very, very nice home poured pint of Guinness. I've reviewed this system many times and I've said, look, it is better than what you can get at home otherwise, but it's still not quite as looks as what you can get of a well done one in a pub, but it's also better than a badly done one in a pub. So it's solid, but not blowing me away. Right then, let's try the one part Guinness pour. Cheers. Hmm. Curious. The one pot pour is better. Now, I'm not saying we should do away with the two pot pour completely. This is only one test and there could be a difference in the glasses. There could be a difference in those two cans. They were bought from the same pack at the same time, but you know, it's only one V one and it's not a large cross sample, but yeah, I hate to break it to you, but actually the one pot Guinness pour, at least out of the nitro surge, well, it's just better. The texture's better, the head feels better. It's got this nice chocolatey note that's just not coming through from the two part. The two part feels a little bit metallic in places, whereas the one just doesn't. I mean, yeah, I don't I don't know how to take this, but that one part pour, it is just better in every way. If you've got a Nitro Surge, give it a try and let me know what you think in the comments below because I'm quite surprised by this. I really thought that having that more kind of volatile component that's then followed by something a little bit softer would actually kind of yield that nicer mid-ground that you're looking for. But in actual fact, at least, as I say, in the case of the Nitro Surge, yeah, a one part Guinness pour, actually, well, it's just better in every way. So there you have it. The answer to the question as to why does Guinness have a two-part pour is simply that, well, traditionally, it was done that way out of casks in Ireland many decades ago, and it's something they've carried on. I have no doubt that some marketing genius somewhere said you should keep doing that because, well, it makes a bit more of a song and dance and it feels that bit more special. And based on my experience here today with the Nitro Surge, I have to think that's really the reason because, well, it is just absolutely fine more than fine it's better with a one pot pour so as i say if you've got a nitro surge give this a go let me know what you think in the comments below but until next time that really is everything so as always thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this video please like it if you haven't already subscribed if you would be so kind and i'll catch you next time cheers